Hi, this is 6.4 packet on sigma notation and we're on example four and up here kind of just a little introduction. So it says use your calculator to evaluate the definite integral. If you haven't done that yet, I'm going to show you how to type in the definite integral. So over here there's like a calculus button. Is this it? Yeah, and it shows you a bunch of things. You can see right here is the definite integral and you should click that and that should appear. If you're on a gray calculator, watch watch this, that button is under the multiplication. So you have to go control multiply and there you have it there. Let's see if it's different on the black. On the black, it's just this button here next to the book. Okay, so there's our definite integral. And we're just typing in what we have on the paper, 1 to 2. The limits of integration are 1 to 2. And we have x plus 1, x plus 1, uh, dx. So this is kind of cool. This will give us the answer. And the answer is 2.5. Lovely. So that's how you do a definite integral in the calculator. But we're going to learn how to do that by hand eventually. Find the corresponding Riemann sum for this definite integral. Okay, this is what this page is all about. So, these are just answers, but I, we need, I need to show you how to find these answers, which I can do. The corresponding Riemann sum. Hold on. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to change a definite integral into a Riemann sum. Are you ready? Let's do it. We kind of have some formulas from the other pages that we need to recall. All right, and one of them is change of x. So do you remember that, that one? It's always going to be b minus a divided by n. That's our width of the base of the rectangle. And then we also have a plus delta x times k. And this is going to go inside of our function. So those are our two. There's a the phone. OK. Once we find these two things, then we're going to build our Riemann sum like this. It's f of this. This goes into our function. Oops, what did I forget? I put change of k. It's change of x times k. And then times delta x. So these are still rectangles, you guys. This is your base of your rectangle and your height of your rectangle. And the summa means add them all up. OK, you ready? Here we go. Let's do a. So what will change of x be? The change in x is going to be 3 minus 1 over n, which is 2 over n, right? And then a plus delta x times k, where do you get a from? a is your lower limit. So this is always a and this is always b. So a is 1, 1 plus delta x, 2 over n with a k. So 2k over n. All right, what do we do with a plus delta xk? We're going to plug it into our function. Where do we get our function from? Right here, 2x plus 1. So this is our definite integral. Now we're going to rewrite it with a limit. You ready? OK. Limit as n goes to infinity. Sigma from k equals 1 to k equals n. Now we're going to have 2x plus 1, so it's going to be 2 times 1 plus 2k over n plus 1, and all of that is multiplied by delta x, which is 2 over n. Okay, we'd plug that into the calculator to find the answer. I'm going to wait and do that in a minute. In BC calculus, you you find this by hand, but for AB, we just plug it in the calculator. We're just learning how to build it. Okay, all right. Let's do B. Delta x. Are you getting good at this? Four minus two is two over n. Okay. A plus delta x k. A plus delta x a is two plus delta x two over n with a k. So two k over n. How does this go? Have you memorized it? Limit as n approaches infinity of sigma from k equals 1 to n. 
Now, 3 times x squared, but what is our x? Our x is this, our input value, 2 plus 2k over n, and that needs to be squared. Where is this coming from? 3x squared minus 1, that's our f of x times delta x, which is just 2 over n. We'll plug that in the calculator and find the answer. Let me do one more. Maybe I could do these quickly. 0 minus negative 2, you guys, is a positive 2. So don't think that this is negative 2. Positive 2. a plus delta xk equals negative 2 plus 2k over n. Let's build it. Limit as n goes to infinity, sigma k equals 1 to the n. What's our function here? x plus 3 squared. So x plus 3 is negative 2 plus 2k over n plus 3 squared. So this is always your x, you guys. This goes in for x. x plus 3 squared times change of x, which is 2 over n. Why is it 2 over n? They couldn't, like, think of anything more exciting? Let's see here. Delta x, pi minus 0 over n. Yay, we have a different delta x. It's pi now. What's a plus delta x k? 0 plus pi over n k. 0 is your starting, delta x times k. Here we go. Limit as n goes to infinity of the sigma of k equals 1 to the nth power. And what's our function? Our function now is sine. Sine of x, instead of x we're putting this, a plus delta x k. So we have pi k over n. And that's just our f of x. We always need to multiply it by change of x. Awesome. Should we get some of these answers? What we're going to do is plug these in the calculator, but I don't know if I have time, so maybe I'll go back to those. Let's, because I really want to finish this in one video. Okay. In each of the following, translate the Riemann sum to the definite integral. Check that both forms give the same results. Okay. Are you guys ready? Here we go. So this we have to write the definite integral, so we need an a value, a b value, and then the function. So do you see here how this is our a plus delta k, delta xk, excuse me, ah, messy. So if that's what we plugged in, can you see what the function's going to be? It's going to be 3x minus 8, and then this is delta x. So I know the function is 3x minus 8, and then you got to put dx, okay? Now what's our, how do we get these values here? We know the starting value is always this number, right? So we know the starting value is 2, and then how did we get change of x again? Do you remember? Delta x is b minus a over n. So if we know a is 2 and b minus a is 3, 3 is actually the distance from a to b, correct? So if we have a distance of 3 from 2, what's our upper limit going to be? It's going to be 5. Huh? What? How'd she get that? We'll do another one. That's it. And then we need to just plug this in the calculator to find that answer. Okay? Let's do another one. Do you guys see how this says 5x minus 1? So that's our function. 5x minus 1, and we always put a dx. Now, where's our starting value? Our starting value comes from in here. This is delta x k minus 2. So the starting value, our a value, is negative 2. This value is b minus a. So what minus negative 2 equals 5? I like to think of it as I need to travel 5 units from negative 2. So negative 2 plus 5 units gets me to 3. 
Did that make sense? 3 minus negative 2, we're just going to check it. Does that equal 5 over n? Is that our delta x? Yes. Awesome. Let's do another one. 3x plus 4. Do you guys see it? Do you see it like I do? 3x plus 4 dx. What's the a value? What's going to go there? Where does it come from? It comes from inside here. It's actually negative 2 again. And then how much are we traveling? We're traveling a distance of 2. So if you're going from negative 2 and you're traveling to a positive distance of 2, you end up with an upper limit of 0. So that's our b value. Another one? Here we go. What's our function? Do you see the cosine? Cosine of x dx. Our starting value. Now remember this formula here is a plus delta x times k. Do you see a plus sign? Nope. So if there's nothing there, well what number represents nothing? Zero, right? So we're going from zero to where? We might not be able to do this as easily because, oh yeah, we will, because we're starting at zero. So we're going from zero to right here. This is change of x. So change of x equals pi over 6n. So the formula there is b minus a over n. So do you see here that pi over 6 over n? It was easy because we started at zero. So the answer is just that number, pi over 6. So from here you would plug this, these four in the count, in the counselor, in the calculator to get the value. Our last example, and I'll go to the calculator if we have time. All right, friends, great. Okay, let's see what is going on here. So a Riemann sum in simplified form should be unsimplified before being translated into a definite integral. For example, do you see how we can't see what the function is and what the change of x is? Like we could up here, it was like co cosine's a function and that's delta x. But what's the function and what's delta x? I don't know. Delta x is always something over n. So what we have to do is we have to actually pull out a 1 over n from the function given. And then you can see that there's my delta x here and that this is my function, which is x cubed. So we have an x cubed here. Let's try it. We only have two of these to do. Okay, I have a square root and then I have a square root of an n cubed. How can I rewrite this? Um, square root of k equals the square root. I actually need to pull out an n. How do I pull out an n of an n squared? I need to take out two of them, right? So the square root of n squared will leave me with my 1 over n. That means 1n is left inside. So we can rewrite this as the square root of k over n times 1n. This square root of k over n is actually my function, the square root of x because there's no a value, there was no starting point, which is zero. And then we went from zero to the number on top here is one. It's okay if we don't get this, like it's okay if you don't understand this fully right now, but you should be able to just kind of follow along. Okay, do you see this n cubed, n cubed, n cubed? We need a one over n. So if I take out one over n, well, what's left here? What would go here? An n squared, right? Now, what is happening in the numerator? What's going on with 1, 4, 9? What, what's special about those numbers? They're all perfect squares, right? They actually represent the k's. This is k equals 1, k equals 2, k equals 3. So what we're doing here is actually k squared. Let me rewrite this now. k over n squared times 1 over n. So the integral is still again 0 because there is no plus sign. 0 to 1. 
of x squared.